Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Sikla Tehran Cheer. Tonight, we're going to be doing Sikla number 72, which is about prayer and about the difficulties that lie within prayer and advice to overcome. So let's just dive right in. Again, it's Sikla number 72. Let me pull up the share screen. Okay, here we are, 72. You may be influenced by false motives and distracted by many outside thoughts when you pray. Ignore them completely. Do your part and say all, your pray all the prayers in order, ignoring all disturbing thoughts. Do what you must and disregard these thoughts completely. So Rabbi Nachman tells us that when some people dive in, they do it for all the wrong reasons, right? Maybe they want to get rich, so they dive in. Or maybe it's to solve a certain issue they're having. Or maybe it's to look good in front of your neighbor, to look impressive. You know, and then there are other people who dive in and their mind is just full of distractions. Their head is all over the place. You know, they're in 50 places at once. So Rabbi Nachman tells us, just keep on going. Dive in in the correct order and ignore all these distractions. Disregard them. The Rebbe also said that these disturbing thoughts actually benefit our prayers. Without distracting thoughts, prayer would be impossible. Tremendous powers are always at work attempting to denounce proper prayers. But distracting thoughts serve to disguise our prayers so that they are ignored by the outside forces. Then these forces do not denounce the prayers and they are allowed to enter on high. So... Rabbi Nachman goes on to say something very interesting, that these extraneous thoughts that we have, they actually serve to trick the negative forces into attacking our tefillos and stopping them from going on high to Shemayim, to Hashem. So our distracting thoughts distract the negative forces. You know, these negative forces think, eh, these tefillos, they're not worth trying to stop. From reaching on high. They're dirty, they're messy, but in the meantime, our tefillos could get there because these negative forces aren't attacking them. God knows the real truth. We may have improper motives or be distracted, but in the very depths of our hearts, our sole intent is to God. God knows this. When we pray, our innermost, our innermost thoughts are always directed toward God. God sees this innermost desire. He sees through the outer thoughts and accepts the prayer in love. So Rabbi Nachman says such a beautiful thing next. He said, Hashem knows our essence. Hashem knows what we really want and who we really want. And even though we might have all, this, all these distractions and all these extraneous thoughts in our tefillah, Hashem knows what we really are about. And Hashem sees our innermost desires and he accepts our tefillah and love. When we pray, our innermost thoughts are always directed toward God. God sees this innermost desire. He sees through our outer thoughts and accepts the prayer in love. It is written, many thoughts are in a man's heart, but God's counsel is what stands from Mishlei. Many thoughts are in a man's heart. When he prays, he's distracted by many outside thoughts, but God's counsel is what stands. There is an innermost point in your heart. Here your thoughts are directed to God alone. This innermost point is called God's counsel. Within this point, your intent is to God alone. God's counsel is what stands. So disregard all distractions and recite your prayers in their order. So Rabbi Nachman tells us from Mishle that many thoughts are in a man's heart, but God's counsel is what stands. So we may have a lot of distracting thoughts, but the innermost point in our heart where we truly want Hashem, that counsel will prevail. That's always going to be there, and it's always going to break through. Okay, so um, so yet again, right? Rabbi Nachman is pointing us to the secret world of prayer. Um, you know, this tefillah, it's, it's so easy to ignore, and it's so difficult to do the right way. But Rabbi Nachman is forever telling us, go back to prayer. Go back again and again. And he will he's going to continue to do this with many, he continues to do this in many, many other Torahs and Sikhos. And I think next week also it's going to be on Tefillah. Um, 
you know, Rabbi Nachman, he just, he wants us to go to war against this difficult act of tefillah. He knew the importance of it and he, he was forever stressing it. Um, but it's just, you know, I, I love that he knew this, but then in his forever encouraging way, you know, he tells us, yes, it's hard. Yes, you have a lot of distracting thoughts and all the wrong motives, right? But that's good too. No worries. It will trick the evil forces. It's gonna, you know, he takes it a step further and he says, don't worry, Hashem, he knows everything. He knows exactly how you feel. So even if your tefillah is garbage, it's not because Hashem knows the innermost depths of your heart. And he knows what you're trying to say before, before we even say it incredible you know um when i was reading this it reminded me of the story of moshe rabinu when he stood at har sinai in front of the burning bush and hashem told him to go take up an israel from its ryan and moshe said me i i have a list i have all these you know speech issues i'm paraphrasing here by the way i have these st speech issues and it's I mean, how could I talk to Paro, right? And Hashem said to, me, said to him, who made man? Who made people deaf? Who made people blind? Like, it was me. I, I know how to do everything. Um, and, I know, and I know the difficulties that you're going to have. And I'm still telling you, go to Mitzrayim. And it just reminded me of this, because Hashem knew the difficulties we were going to have with prayer and how and how we'd be all over the place and how there's so many ways to get caught up in the wrong way with it. Besides for actually finding the time and and doing it properly, you know? And um, so Hashem, Hashem knew what difficulties we would have to, we would have with it, but still he said, we need to do everything we could to reach out to him and to connect to Hashem through tefillah. So, what do we do about these distracting thoughts? So I wanted to bring in a, um, a Lakuti Maharam piece here. Um, I'm going to bring in Lakuti Maharam Torah 112. It's a very beautiful piece, and it's going to give us some insight on how to handle these distracting thoughts. So I'm just going to pull up the share screen one more time. OK. So we're going to rotate. Rotate. Okay. So here we go. The wicked walk on every side from Tehillim. This means that the unholy scent surrounds the holy because God made the one corresponding to the other. From Echa. Okay. This applies especially to someone who has already succumbed to the temptation to sin and is so attracted to the unholy that this is where his place is, God forbid. The wicked in the form of strange thoughts, feelings, and temptations have this person surrounded on every side. Right? So a person tries to pray, and he tries to come close to Hashem, but he has so many obstacles in his prayer. The wicked walk on every side. He's, he's surrounded by all these distractions and, as Rabbi Nachman puts it, strange thoughts, feelings, and temptations. When such a, a person experiences spiritual arousal and wants to return to God, to God, he finds it very difficult to pray and express himself to God because of all the strange thoughts and feelings surrounding him on every side. Every person experiences this in his own way. One finds it impossible to bring out the words before God with the proper reverence, love, and vitality. None of one's words and prayers are able to penetrate the screens and barriers separating one from God, and they remain down below. So the imagery in this piece is so powerful. But Rabbi Nachman is saying here that, you know, when a person comes to Davin and he has, he has all these evil forces surrounding him and all these distracting thoughts all around him, he finds it possible. He finds it impossible to Davin in the correct way and to, and to connect to Hashem through it and to give Tefillah the proper credence that it deserves. Um, and 
you know, again, with this imagery, it's painting the scene like he, like the person can't penetrate the screens and the barriers and the obstacles separating him from Hashem. And these telos remain down below. So, um, you know, it just makes me think of just those times, you know, I, I don't know, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I could relate to this. There's been times when I've, you know, the house was quiet and I sat down to Davin and then just at that moment that I sat down, the phone doesn't stop ringing. You know, the kids, thank God, they're, you know, someone decides to get hurt and a whole drama happens. And um, and that's besides for the fact that I was thinking about what I'm going to cook for dinner and whatever else I have to do in my day, right? And it really sometimes feels intense, like, there's just so much wicked on every side. There's just so many obstacles, so much stopping me. And it just kind of feels pointless. You know, it's like, why am I even wasting my time doing this? It's just, I'm not getting anywhere. Right? Okay, so here, those are the screens and the barriers, you know? Okay, so only when a person repents with genuine honesty and sincerity will he be able to exp express himself acceptably with words of reverence and love springing from the depths of a heart truly aroused. Then his radiant words will break through all the barriers and coverings and with them, all the words and prayer that remain below until now will ascend. So Rabbi Nachman saying that only when a person does teshuva honest, honestly and sincerely will, will he be able to break through, will his philos be able to break through and to ascend to Hashem. So how does one achieve this? The key is through truth. And everything else depends on this. You must follow the path of truth on your own level. For the seal of the Holy One, blessed be he, is truth. From Shabbat 55a, Yoma 69b. Truth is the foundation of everything from beginning to end. Truth is the head, the middle, and end of the entire creation. So how does one do this tshuva? How does one break through the barriers, right? So Rabbi Nachman is saying the key is through truth. MS. Truth is everything. Um, he says here that it's the foundation of everything. It's the head. It's the middle. It's the end. In order, in order to connect to Hashem, in order to do true teshuva, we need to we need to be truthful. When a person attains truth, it's as if God's own life is clothed in him, since truth is God's seal. Someone like this can rightly say, God is my light and my salvation from Tehillim. Because God shines on him, he can find plenty of openings to escape the darkness and, and exile in which he is imprisoned. So through this truth, when a person attains this truth and gets this truth, since Hashem is, is MS, he's complete MS, he can see he, he's able to get out of this rut of darkness and he's able to, to attach himself to Hashem. In reality, many opens, openings exist there. The rabbi said, if a person comes to defile himself, there are many openings for him. From Yoma 38b, Menacho 29b. There are many openings through which per, a person can fall. It follows that there are also many openings through which he can escape. It is just that the fool goes in darkness. He simply does not see the, the excess and he remains tied and bound, unable to escape. That is, until he succeeds in speaking to God truthfully. When he does this, the words radiate with light and God shines to him. So again, through this truth, a person is like, all of a sudden, the ways to get out of this rut becomes enlightened, becomes a person is able to see them, even though he was never able to see them before. It is only that, that the opening of your word shine light. It gives understanding to the simple, from Tehillim. For the shining words themselves, words of truth, to show the person the opening, gives understanding to the simple. Because those simple people who are caught in darkness and cannot see how to get out will thereby understand and see the opening, and then they can escape the darkness, saying to the prisoners, go forth. And to those who are in darkness, be revealed from Yeshaya. Okay, here we go. But the truth has to be complete truth. 
clean, clear, and without blemish. It has to be perfect truth. Anyone with sense and understanding should pray all his days to be able to say one true word to God the way he should, even just once in his life. So this is some very deep level of truth that we need to pray to get to this level of truth every day. If you are trying to, to pray but cannot say a single word because you feel you have sunk in a confusion and darkness, try to say what you say with truth. Even on the most elementary level, for example, say the words, God help me. Truthfully, even if you cannot say them with any real enthusiasm, just say the words honestly in whatever way you can. With the true word, you will be able to see the openings in the darkness and escape into the light so as to pray proper, properly. So if you're, if you're trying to dive in and you feel like you're just not breaking through at all, you can't break through the screens, you can't break through the barriers, just say whatever you could in truth. Just, just speak words of truth. Just say, Hashem, help me. And just by doing that, you'll be able to see these openings and you'll be able to get through these exits and have this light from Hashem shine on you. So um, so a person tries to pray and he tries to come close to Hashem, but he has so many obstacles in his prayers. And the imagery in this piece is so powerful. And Rabbi Nachman is saying, just say words of truth and you'll find these doors. You'll find these openings to break through. So, um, and he speaks about this that we need to say, that we need to pray our whole lives to say just one word of truth. Um, I mean, so deep, I don't even know what that means, right? This one, this, to say something so deeply to do, I guess it's saying to do such internal work, as it said before, to do like real, sincere, honest, truva, truva to, to say, to be truthful and to say things truthfully and to know really who you are and to connect to Hashem through that. Um, you know, but I guess, I think also this, these words of truth, it just remind, it connected back to this original Sikha that we did number 72, because in the original Sikha also, it says that Hashem knows the truth, right? Hashem knows what's in our innermost essence, what's in our, the depth, depths of our heart. Hashem knows this truth. And it's referencing these truths that we may not know it and we need to dive in our whole lives to get to that truth, but Hashem knows it. And Hashem's always helping us and giving us the benefit of the doubt and taking that in, into consideration with our tefillos. So it's never hopeless, never. It's always, it's always hopeful and it's always a way that we can connect to Hashem and every effort counts. So I wanted to bring in one last piece from a bit more advice. Um, I'm going to bring up the share screen again. Well, before I even do that. So it's, it's this book, a bit more advice, and it's a little bit more of a commentary on Lakute Eitzot, and it's written by Reb Shimshon Barsky, who lived from 1873 to 1935. Well, Lakute Eitzot is written by Reb Nassan, and then this is expands it a little more. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up the share screen now. Okay. Okay, here we go, 19. Your strong effort to pray right brings another significant result. You tear open an escape hatch, enabling others to do teshuva. Simply by exerting yourself to follow the advice of 18, saying the words simply and honestly, paying close attention to what, you, to what they mean, God helps others return to the right way. They escape the traps they've fallen into, their evil cravings and bad character traits. They return to the straight path of Torah. So, um, so he's saying here that through, you know, it's not, we read this whole piece in Lakuti Maharan that, you know, we get more light and our tefillos are able to connect to Hashem. But here we see through doing this, through dominating with focus, you're not just helping yourself, you're helping everybody around you. 
and you're helping others to do this teshuva. And you're, I love this term that he uses, um, this escape hatch. You're opening this escape hatch, this secret door, enabling others to follow and to, to connect to Hashem through that. And he says this other part here, says this, these other things here in number 21, that, you know, through dominating with enthusiasm and with Havana, this is how Mashiach will come. It's very, it's a wild statement, but, um, you know, he says it. This is, this is going to bring Mashiach through tefillah, through prayer. Um, yeah, I've, um, if, you know, if you have the schuss of knowing people who really dive in with so much Kavana, it is really true. They, it, it seems they do open the hatch and Shemayim for others. I mean, it's just, even practically, it's just so inspiring to see people who dive into Hashem, like, like he's actually, he's right there in front of us, you know? Um, I actually, I have this very sp special person in our neighborhood, in my neighborhood, who unfortunately his father got very sick from Corona and, you know, it was touch and go for months upon months. And his son, this is the person who lives in my community, his son lives in that community. The only word to describe what he did was relentless. This guy, the son, his son, was relentless, nonstop to Hillam, nonstop Chalab Bakos. He had Ninyanim going to Kabarim. I mean, of course, he did like a lot of mitzvot and Torah learning, also in Spas for his father, um, in order for him to have a Rufuah Shlema, right? And FYI, his father, Mir Tashem, is going to have full recovery, continue to feel good, and he's doing great. And the doctors are totally perplexed because they, did not think he was going to make it. Um, but I, yeah, I'm telling you, this guy was, was relentless. Just he wouldn't stop. He just kept on going and going and pushing to be on, on, on himself, of course, and on the whole community. And um, the whole time, even like when I didn't know what was going to happen with his father, I was just thinking, I'm like, I wish I had as much of Muna and Spila as this guy does. You know, like he, he, he knew it would cure his father. He really knew. Um, you know, I was like joking with my husband that if God forbid I was in a situation like that. God forbid I would have given up in a week, you know, like, okay, it's tried, It didn't work. Moving on, you know, just kidding. But um, it's like, uh, it's just, it just goes to show like how much we need to believe in the power of prayer and how we can free ourselves through it and, and so many others, as we saw from these pieces. So um, I just I just wanted to share that story because I thought it was so amazing, but I just, I'm gonna end here and I really just wanna give us all a bracha that we should believe in our tefillos and that we should come to Davin, to Hashem in truth and bring the coming of Mashiach very soon. So thank you everybody for listening and have a wonderful night.